All right, guys, so we're going to go into Neuro real quick. Again, we're going to do a basic overview of Neuro, basically the signs and symptoms, um, the pathophysiology, and some goals for Neuro patients. Then we're going to go specifically into each one and kind of dissect them and look at all the specific parts. But right now, this video, we're just going to do a basic overview, just really basic. So, let's get into it here. So, okay, so uh, neuro, neurological um, disorders. We have really four big ones. We have, um, in your neuro, your regular body, you have your central nervous system, and you also have your peripheral nervous system. So, your central nervous system, if you guys remember, is really just your brain and your spinal cord. Your peripheral nervous system is really all the other things outside of the brain and spinal cord. So, in your central nervous system, you can develop multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease that affect your brain and spinal cord, okay? Your peripheral nervous system, you guys can develop, well not you guys, but your patients can develop MG, which is myasthenius gravis, and ALS, which is just a fancy word for Lou Gehrig's disease, okay? So, um, let's go into specific signs and symptoms of each one to identify each one, but let's first go into um, some pharmacology, pharmacology, <laughs> ah, some, uh, some pathophysiology for each one. So for your central nervous system, I like to just remember this by saying it's your CMP, C-M-P, central nervous system is your multiple sclerosis. Now for your multiple sclerosis, I want you guys to think of MS, because that's really what we call it in the medical field. We don't always say multiple sclerosis. We call it MS. So. For your multiple sclerosis, I want you to think of MS as myelin sheath. Okay? Okay. Because in MS, you have a myelin sheath degradation. Now, if you guys like remember way back when you took pathophysiology and, um, and uh, you know, all the patho and the physiology that goes with your prerequisites to get into nursing school. You guys remember that you have something called an axion, right? This is like really like your neuron. And these are how your motor impulses are moved. You have an axion, right? And you also have this neuron that has like a long, like whippy tail. Well, on each one of these neurons, you have something called a myelin sheath that almost looks like a little choo-choo train. And it could almost actually even look like a, um, a big uh, palm tree, right? Okay, there we go. Now it looks more like it. Okay, but right here, and right here, your big long um, um, neuro cell is filled with myelin sheets. These myelin sheets, sheets, are pretty much just like sheets, pretty much. Myelin sheets help to move electrical impulses along. So if you twitch your fingers or twitch your hands, the reasons why we can move is because these myelin sheath move this what's called action potential down that myelin sheath. So with multiple sclerosis, you have a degradation of this myelin sheath here. Okay, 
So your myelin sheath now is pretty much almost all gone. So what's left is your neurocell without a myelin sheath. So it really can't transport impulses like you should. So a major sign and symptom for multiple sclerosis is you have numbness, you also have cramping, and you have muscle weakness in your muscles. Because there's no way to pretty much transfer this electrical impulse from this action potential, okay? That's a really basic overview. We'll go into more later, but right now we're just doing the basics. So for your Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease, let's see here. Parkinson's, you have a decrease in the amount of dopamine inside your brain. So Park, we have decreased dope in the park. Because no kid wants to go to the park and have to have drugs shoved in their face, right? So, <laughs> so Parkinson's disease is you're bringing down the dope. You have less dopamine. Now, if you guys remember back to those pathophysiology days when you took those prerequisites like way back when, um, your dopamine in your brain helps regulate uh, a few key aspects of your central nervous system. One of those things is your blood pressure. So when your patient, um, let's say, goes through a code or has a hypotension episode, we uh, give your patient dopamine, which is a potent vasoconstrictor that helps increase the amount of blood flow back to the brain, back to the heart, and dilate your kidneys. But one thing that dopamine also helps with is your central nervous system and your ability to move, okay? So, you'll see a lot of your patients with Parkinson's disease um, move very, very um, slowly and um, almost looks like they have a shuffling gait. So I like to think of Parkinson's disease as someone barely learning how to park a car. Because you'll see your patients kind of like this. They kind of walk very slowly and it looks pretty much like this. And they're very, very shuffly. They shuffle their feet a lot. So if you think about someone parking their car for like the first time, it kind of looks like they're shuffling their feet trying to park the car. That, that's just a way that you can remember it. Um, let's see. You also have something called pin rolling, or sorry, pill rolling, where a lot of your patients with Parkinson's disease will have this um, symptom called pill rolling. It will look like the rolling pills because they have the decreased dopamine, which causes um, your um, motor reflexes to be off. You'll also have tremors in your peripherals. So you'll be very, very shaky. So if you guys think that parking a car for your first time, you'll be very nervous, you'll be very shaky, and you'll have a shuffling gait, okay? So that's just a way that you guys can remember it uh, with decreased dopamine. Now, I'm going to go into the next two, myelstevious gravis and Lou Gehrig's uh, disease in this next slide here, okay? Slide in this next video. <laughs>